Me, Nick Qualia, this week here with Marvazan. No Mike Molino. We thought we were going to have the whole crew back together this week. Turns out it's not because Mike Mike yesterday was like, yeah, we can record on Tuesday. And then <laughs> Tuesday comes along. Mike's like, oh, just kidding. I actually have a party I have to go to. So Mike's out. Just me and Marv. You think, you know, where do we put Mike on blast? I'm going to put Mike on blast all night. <laughs> so it's me and Marv. Uh, Marv, last night I'm going to sound like crap because I'm getting a new mic finally. I can get rid of this microphone. I'm way too loud for this microphone. Man, man, at least at least it was better than the other show. The last. Oh my god! Yeah, well, that's that was with this microphone, but I think that was more because I think my Wi-Fi stunk that night. I think that's what that was. But I'm way yeah. too loud for this microphone. My voice blows this one out. I did turn it down, but still, I blow this one out. So I'm getting a new microphone. So I'm just I'm, I'm excited happy, for that. I'm happy to be back, man. It's been it's been a minute for me. So yeah, and the Patriots just keep on winning. Yeah. So actually, so. We didn't talk about me and you didn't get to talk about this last week because you weren't here, obviously. Uh, and you know, we could talk about this briefly before we go on to the Patriots Colts game because obviously that's a massive game. Saturday night prime time this week. Uh, the Patriots, the first half of the Bills Bucks, it looked like the Patriots really did break the Bucks. I mean, the Bills, but yeah, the Bills did come back in the second half. Tom Brady did end up beating the Bills, won me my bet. I had I had Tom Brady 306 yards. That final play in overtime got me over 306 yards. Thank God. But the Bills, Marv, and yeah, you know, let's talk about this first. I don't think – I think the AFC East is locked up for the Patriots. Yeah, I mean, that was it. The Bills needed to win that game if they needed – if they wanted a chance to – um reclaim the throne of the AFC East and with being two games behind the Patriots and looking at their schedules, I think the Patriots have it locked up here, even with a loss. That's the important part here. Even I mean, they just the, got to go three and one because they've they got that two go, game lead. If the Patriots go three and one, they got it locked up. The Patriots go two and two. It's not ideal. However, they still have a great chance to still be a top the the AFC East top of the AFC East and potentially still the number one seed due to the fact of their conference record, they have a great they they have a great conference record. I think they've only lost once in the conference compared to the other teams who have been struggling. So the Patriots are still in a very good position, especially with the um, Bills losing to the Buccaneers first half. Buccaneers were just killing the Bills really, really bad. And it was like, wow, it's over. This Josh Allen is back to being 2018 Josh Allen. And it's just the, the Bills will no longer be who they are. But, you know, they figured it out and they, they have momentum going into the next week, potentially. So there's still going to be a team to be reckoned with. I don't think we're going to be seeing the same results in two weeks from now when we face the Buffalo Bills. But yeah, very interesting for the Patriots to have be in the driver's seat right now. Right, and and you know you look at the Bills and you look at how they played the Bucks in the first half. They didn't run the ball a single time in the first half of that game, which I think they the said that's the first. Yeah, the Bills they didn't run it a single time. They have, they have no running game. They've got none, and I think they said that's the first time in the Super Bowl era that that happened. And you know when we say that they don't they don't have a running game, I don't understand it. Like they don't have. It's not like they have like a bad run of game. It just doesn't exist. They don't even try for the most part. They have two running backs that I think are so, decently solid, like Devin Singletary and Zach Moss. When you look at those two guys, you're like, okay, these are these are decent running backs, but they just they're they're not used. Their run game is non-existent, and like that just makes defenses not even have to guess what you're doing. It was almost the polar opposite of what the Patriots did, but the Patriots won the game when they just kept running and running and running. The The Bills didn't have to worry about the pass. The Bucks didn't have to worry about the run at all, so they could just drop back in coverage. That's all they had to do in the first half of that game. Now, looking at the AFC East, you're right. If the, if the Patriots lose two, just as long as those one that one loss doesn't come against the Bills, like you're fine. Yeah. Because even if you do somehow tie, even though that, that wouldn't make sense, because then if you did beat the Bills, then they have another loss that they fall behind. It, so that doesn't make any sense. But regardless, like you, you know what I'm saying, they're in really good position. They At this point, it's safe to say, I think that the Patriots win the AFC East. 
in conference wise, you are right about the record. Because I was thinking when you said that, I was thinking back to the losses: Bucks, NFC, Saints, NFC, Cowboys, NFC, and they're, <laughs> they're yeah, one man. AFC loss. Miami Dolphins. That's the damn Miami Dolphins first game <laughs> of the season. Can you believe it? <laughs> no, no. And you want to talk about records, and we're going to talk about that uh, a little later on for the the remainder of the season, the last four games. But the the Dolphins in Miami always give the Patriots fits. Yeah. I don't love that form. I do not love that form, especially to end the season. Like that's that's the week when weird things could happen. I I, I like it for them for the fact that look, you, after this, you're going into the playoffs. Why not have a great hard fought divisional matchup against Miami Dolphin, where you know you have to and you you have to, it might be a game where you have to win, to especially if it's for the AFC. Team. Yeah. Right. You have to win that game. So go in there and have a hard fought game where you have to win, be the number one seed. I, I love that for the team. And then they have the bye week. They'll be the only team in the AFC with the bye week. I love it for them. And they have to find a way to come back and win that game. I mean, Miami's been playing very well as of late. Brian Flores looked like he was out of there, unfortunately, and the team has turned it around. So it's gonna it's gonna be tough. And a game in Miami, oh boy. Hey, it's it's beautiful because Miami's only a game behind the Bills, which is hilarious. Crazy. Marv, I don't know if you remember this, but I saw a lot of people on Twitter. Don't want to say a specific fan base, but there was a specific fan base based in New York, not the city, in New York. <laughs> and they were claiming the Bills they were they were gonna run the AFC East for a while. The Patriots yeah. dynasty. See you later. And when you look at the Bills falling apart like this, and they're still a very good football team. I think they're going to be a very good football team for the for the years to come. I think Josh Allen's a super talented quarterback. They have a solid defense. And I think Sean McDermott's a very good coach. I think Bill Belichick got into his head a little bit, but he's a very good head coach. The Seeing what the Bills are doing and how they're falling apart, like it, it makes you appreciate and it makes you like realize so many people don't realize how hard it is for the, what the Patriots did what they what they did for the, the these last 20 years because it's so hard to just maintain the success in a league that has rules set up so you can't be successful every year so it makes it harder on you to continue to be successful and just seeing what the bills did they're pulling back a little bit the chiefs even pulled back a little bit this year it just like it's just makes that 20 year run so much more impressive we'll never we'll never see something like it again we won't. No, we won't. We just won't see something like that where a 20-year dominant run. I know Kansas City Chiefs, once they won their first one, it was ugh, we're gonna we're gonna get seven with this team. And that sounds great because you've seen it happen before with another team. It's just impossible. It's impossible it just doesn't to do happen it in this era. You mentioned the bye week earlier, how the Patriots are fighting for that bye with the number one seed in the AFC. Now, obviously, the Patriots coming off a bye week this week as we go into Saturday night against the Colts. The Colts also coming off of a bye. Patriots-Colts, not a battle for, for the top spot in the AFC, obviously. I think I don't think the Colts are going to make it to that point, make it to the top of the AFC. But it's a huge game. Playoff seeding. Two of the hottest teams in the AFC. Patriots-Colts. Marv, I got to tell you. The Colts, I did not say this a few weeks ago. The Colts scare the hell out of me. What do you think about this game? Colts don't scare me due to one reason. Look, Colts are built for the playoffs. They're not they're not flashy. You got Jonathan Taylor. Carson Wentz is, you know, he's limited his turnovers this year, which is huge when you when you think about a Carson Wentz led team if he limits his turnovers you're going to be okay and that's what they've been they've been a really decent team and Taylor looks is looking like an MVP since um Derrick Henry's been down however because the reason why I say the Colts don't scare me is they have one main option and what does Bill Belichick do I know everyone says that Bill Belichick will take your number one option away and force you to beat them another way and that's what the Colts are going to have to do. They're going to have to use Michael Pittman. They're going to have to use um, who else is, are their receivers out? T.Y. Hilton is still out there trying to have a rejuvenated season. Carson Wentz is going to have to use his arms to beat this Patriots defense. 
And I just don't see them be having enough weapons to do that if they're able to focus and stop Jonathan Taylor. Now, the Patriots' run defense is not the greatest. However, if they own in, they have two weeks to own in and focusing on stopping Jonathan Taylor, I think they can limit them and force Carson Wentz to win the game. And I don't think he's ready for that against his Patriots defense. That's why I'm not too worried. The Colts are missing a couple few offensive weapons offensively to to um to really make some noise in the playoffs. They're built for the playoffs because they hit hard. They're 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 gritty. They like to slow the game down. They like to keep the opposing offenses off the field and really control the clock. And that's what they're going to try to do against the Patriots. And these are two teams that, if their defense aren't clicking, they're not going to be putting up a lot of points on the board. Yeah. The, so the over under is actually locked at forty five uh, at the moment. Do you think that's over under? A game like this, I say under. I feel the same way. I, I think these offenses both have the capability to put up put up enough points to hit the over, like pretty, pretty handily together. But I think coming off of this of, of bye weeks like this, you know, sometimes teams come out slow. And I wouldn't be shocked if this game goes and hits the under because of that. Now you mentioned the obviously the, the Bill Belichick thing. He takes away your best weapon, right? Takes away Jonathan Taylor. That's the idea. If you do that, you force Carson Wentz to throw the ball. And I think if you if it does come down to that, and if you're able to stop Jonathan Taylor, I think you have a very good chance to win this football game. But their run game is obviously so good that you almost have to, even if you are taking away Jonathan Taylor, you have to consistently keep an eye on it, which is going to open up the passing game, I think, for the Colts. The Colts have a solid defense. Colts have a solid run game. I think Carson Wentz is a good quarterback, not great. He's a good quarterback, and he can keep you in a game. He can potentially win you games occasionally. He's not that kind of quarterback usually who can win you a football game, but he can do it sometimes. He hasn't He hasn't shown me that he can. I, I, th- I think he can put it together. I think he's got the talent enough where he could put it together and win you a football game. I don't think, again, it's not a consistent thing. It's not something that he's going to do for you on a regular basis. But I think he's got the talent where he could do it. Do I think that's going to be the case this time? No. But I think he can keep the team in it if you do force him to throw the football. And Jonathan Taylor is so good. I have a tough time, especially with the Patriots' run defense, that, like you said, hasn't been the greatest. I have a tough time believing that even with this two-week stretch, I have a tough time believing that the Patriots are going to be able to silence Jonathan Taylor. It's damage control for him. You just have to, you have to slow him down. You know, whatever that may be, however many yards that is a hundred, that even might be a win. If you keep him to a hundred yards and like a touchdown or two. The thing, the thing with the Colts is their Achilles heel. And it's crazy to think about is that they don't run the ball enough with Jonathan Taylor. When their offense gets stagnant, it's because they get away from giving the ball to Jonathan Taylor, and they try to put the ball in Carson Wentz's hands for him to make plays. And then if you look, if you just look at Colts fans or watching any Colts games, they're like, yo, run the damn ball. Run the ball with Jonathan Taylor. He's your best player. Let's keep the rock going to him. If the Colts focus anywhere else and not get Jonathan Taylor involved, you're going to win this game easily. If Jonathan Taylor is the focal point and you're not able to stop him, it's going to be tough. It's going to be a tough game because now you're going to keep Mac out of rhythm. And it's been a couple of weeks now that we've seen Mac been able to throw the ball. So, you know, we, you want to get the Kendrick Bournes, you want to get the tight ends really involved in this game and where you can put up some enough points to beat the Colts. It's not going to take many, but you're going to take, it's going to take at least maybe three touchdowns to beat this team. Now, Colts linebacker, I'm not going to try to pronounce his last name, uh, but Bobby O. I'm just going to leave it at that. I'm not – I know I'm going to butcher that last name if I try. Bobby O, quote, we're really going to try to make the game one-dimensional and see what Mac Jones can do. That is from Stephen Holder on Twitter. You think if the if the Colts obviously the Patriots run game has been good this year. You think if the if the Colts are successful in taking away the Damian Harris from Andre Stevens and double headed monster, and they do make Mac Jones beat them, do you think the Patriots and Mac Jones can do that? I absolutely think they they'll be able to throw the ball and find some seams. I mean, 
do I think that the Colts are going to be able to stop Damian Harris or Mondre Stevenson? We just saw a game plan where they stacked the box <laughs> every single play, and the Patriots were still able to get four to five yards out of it. And they were so, just calling the same play, just, <laughs> just flipping it. <laughs> just flipping it. So it's going to be really – I'm not saying, you know – Colts defense are are going to let that happen every single time, but it's going to be very hard to stop um, Damien Harris and Ramondre Steven, Stevenson. Mac has has shown us that if he needs the the ball needs to be in his hands for him to make a play, he'll be able to do so. Um, they have they have decent enough weapons that they they can give it to Mac to throw the ball, and Josh they, Josh McDaniels is going to be able to scheme scheme through that as well. So I'm not too worried that Bobby's saying that and. They're going to try to make Mac Jones win the game. I mean, many teams want a rookie quarterback to try to go out there and make plays. Mac has not made many mistakes, and that's and that's all the Patriots are going to ask for him is to manage the game and not make mistakes. So, I mean, good luck with that game plan. I feel like every team's going in facing the Patriots with that game plan. All right, give me a score prediction. What do you think happens this Saturday night? I love Saturday night football. You can you can watch the game. You can maybe have a couple beverages. And you can wake up on Sunday and you can be fine. I like Saturday night football games when I knew they were coming. I Did don't you like know when, this was coming. I mean, I knew they, it didn't it didn't start off as a Saturday night football. No, game. yeah, it got flexed. It got flexed. I don't like random flex schedule games. It's December, you know. People got plans. People got things to do, but. Saturday night prediction. I'm going 23 Patriots. 14 Colts. I thought, I thought that's where you were ending. Just 23 Patriots. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> what? Uh, so I, I made this prediction on my other show, the Couch Guy Sports Podcast. And because I made that prediction, I'm going to stick with it. I think the Patriots do lose one of these next four games, and I wouldn't be shocked if it's this one. I'm picking it to be this one. I think the Colts do beat the Patriots in a close game, 31-28. to And there's a couple reasons why. Jonathan Taylor, the Colts scare the hell out of me. I don't know what it is, but the Colts scare the hell out of me right now. Carson Wentz, again, good quarterback. Not great, good quarterback. They have some weapons. Their defense is solid. Jonathan Taylor is a monster. Right now with Derrick Henry being out, Jonathan Taylor is the best running back in the league. And the offensive coordinator of the Super Bowl where the Patriots had the Eagles put up numbers on them is the head coach of this football team, Frank Wright. That also scares me because we've seen – We've seen a scheme where he's done it before. Listen, the Colts are red hot. Eventually, I got to imagine the Patriots. I, I don't think the Patriots are going to win out on this season. I think they're going to lose one of these next four games. And I'm picking it to be this game. Off the bye week? Off the bye week. Off the bye week. Listen, the Colts are coming off of a bye week, too. Yeah, I don't I feel, like it. I feel, I feel gross. I feel like I have to go take a shower now for saying that. I feel like the Patriots are- the Colts are easier to scheme against with just being so one-dimensional with Jonathan Taylor. They can, they can have big plays with Michael Pittman as well, but I trust the Patriots secondary with that. I just, I think the Colts are going to find a way to pull this one out. And again, that's not going to make me, you know, think the sky is falling. If, if the Patriots do lose to the Colts this weekend, I think that the Patriots are still going to be fine. There's a very solid chance they win the AFC and now let's finish it off with this. Who do you think has a better chance to win the AFC? I'm going to take the Titans out of the conversation. I don't think – Titans fans, I'm sorry. I don't think you win the AFC. What, what do you mean win the AFC? So who's going to the Super Bowl? Get the one seed. I'm sorry. Who do you okay. think ends up with the one seed in the AFC? The Patriots or the Kansas City Chiefs? Now, obviously, you just read off the Patriots' get remaining schedule – Colts this weekend, you've got the Bills again, then you've got the Jaguars, Urban Meyer, and, the, and Trevor Lawrence, which, by the way, that machine down there in Jacksonville, things are moving smooth. Relationships down there, great. Urban Meyer seems like an excellent fit down there for Jacksonville. Uh, and then the Miami Dolphins in Miami. For the Chiefs, the Chiefs this weekend have the Chargers, then the Steelers, then the Bengals, and the Broncos. 
Who do you think ends up winning the AFC as in getting the one seed and getting the bye week? Ooh, and they, they have the same record, right? Kansas yep. City and Patriots. Kansas City has a better chance of winning out than the Patriots. So say it again. They have Chargers. Chargers, Broncos, Steelers, and I just had it up. You dummy. Uh, I'm calling myself a dummy. Chargers, Steelers, Bengals, Broncos. Chargers, Steelers, Bengals, Broncos. Kansas City has a better chance of winning out. However, I think the Patriots have found something here. I think they've they really found something with their defense and how they want to play, how they're using Mac Jones and their offense is starting to click. I think the Patriots can win out as well. So if I'm using that thought process, Who's the current number one seed is the New England Patriots. I'm going with the Patriots, damn it. All right. See, and no, by the way, full disclosure, I heard this question on uh, PTI, pardon the interruption. So I thought it was a great question for this show tonight. I wanted to get your opinion on it. Uh, I think the Patriots do end up, and I think they have the better chance to end up with the one seed of the AFC because I see both of these teams dropping at least one more game. And for the Chiefs, too. I think the Chiefs have a tough time against the Chargers. The Chargers are inconsistent, okay? Sometimes the Chargers look like a great team. You don't know what you're getting from the Chargers. You don't. But the Chargers, for whatever reason, give they give the Chiefs fits. And they beat the Chiefs occasionally. I think the Chargers are going to beat the Chiefs this weekend. And I think they're both going to end up with – both the Patriots and the Chiefs are going to end up with one more loss before we hit the end of the season. And I think the Patriots do end up with the one seed. I think it's just – it's unfolding perfectly – and not only that, it's unfolding perfectly for a Patriots Tom Brady Super Bowl. Please don't start. Don't piss me off. <laughs> what's the, what's the problem? Don't piss me off with this, man. <laughs> we, we, we were doing so well. <laughs> what's the problem? I'm not ready to talk about Broncos Patriots. I mean, not bro, Bucks and Patriots right now. Ah, uh, see, Mike would be. Yeah. You two, you guys just like you guys eat up headlines. Eat it oh, up. Yeah. Yes, it, they make me. They make me so happy. And it's always me that has to tell y'all relax. Hey, I think was it me and Mike are calling for a Patriots undefeated season a couple years sure, ago? Yeah, sure <laughs> were. It might have been, but hey, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just seeing the path that's unfolding in front of me. That's all. That's all I'm doing. All right. We're wrapping up here. And, hey, by the way, if if I'm wrong about the Patriots Colts this weekend, feel free to shell me on Twitter. Twitter handle's right there, oh, at Nick Quag. I don't got to shell him. Just praise me. That's and all. then also, yeah, and then you can praise Marv at the same time. Tweet us at the same time, at MarvTV underscore. I am wildly impressed that I was able to point that accurately on here. That would that should have messed with my mind, but it didn't. All right, Nick Qualia, Marv is on. Guys. We're going to talk to you next week following the Patriots Colts huge Saturday night game. We're going to talk to you then. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening.